How's it going? Hey there. Is this yourself? <laughs> just going to do you an old monologue about St. Peter. You know, Judgment Day. <laughs> we'll all get there someday. We're all only passing through, you know. And Paddy. And the six counties, you know. And I learned this off my old drinking buddy, my old mate, my mucker. There, my man. He used to hang around there around Thomas Street and drink the Thomas House, you know. Just up there from Christchurch Cathedral, you know. And Taylor's Hall and Patrick Street Cathedral and Francis Street Bleeding Church, all the bells started ringing on the Sunday morning. You, you couldn't get a feckin' sleep at the feckin' things. Anyway, I think Dermo, I think he got this off the toilet door in the Thomas House. But he seemed to spend a bit of time, now that I think about it. But anyway, it's about St. Peter and Judgment Day. The goes like this. Recently, I was invited by an old-time friend of mine to come up to his residence to taste some beer and wine. And we ate some lobster salad and a lot of other truck and we drank each other's health until the hour of three had struck. So we drank until we did not know which was wine or which was beer. And all at once my mind was cloudy, you know the way it is. And my brain was not too clear. What's now? I made it home, sure. I don't know how. I think, we praise, I said. Anyway, I was paralysed when I got into bed. I died. That's right, dead. Died. <clears throat> Went to heaven. And found repentance was too late. As suddenly I was ushered before the golden gate. What hast thou here, said Peter? For you know you can't get in. For surely you must suffer for your greedy, gluttonous sin. Very angry man. I moved aside and hung my head in shame. And Peter's clerk wrote, lost against me then. Thinking lost. No chance. Well, next came an old Italian, one whom I knew very well, and so I listened carefully to the story he might tell. Addy, good father, Pedro, I've come to you at last. My peanut days are over, my banana nights are past. No more a robber, no baker, no steel, and never under your sidewalk do I throw a banana peel. Well, you did well, said Peter. But your gains, they were ill-gotten, and your peanut shells were empty, and your bananas oft times rotten. Well, next came an aged Hebrew, all with satchel in his hand, and before the gate of Peter, he commenced to make a stand. I have jewels fit for angels, which I'll auction off to you, or I tell you, I might give you them on the installment plan, but hey, that might be a sin. I give them for half price, if you but let me in. On earth, I had a clothing store, my goods were neat and strong, and to show you I have, a, I have an overcoat which I forgot to bring along. Well, you did well, said Peter, but surely you must know that there's little use for overcoats in the place where you must go down there. Yeah, with Thatcher. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, next. Next came poor El Paddy, a son of Erden's Isle, and he greeted El St. Peter with his top of the morning smile. Tis yourself, St. Peter, boy, and you're looking. I will say it. You're looking so sweet and neat. Will you ever hurry up now and show me to me seat? Hold, said Peter, for your case must first be tried and you must show a passport before you get inside. Very angry man. And will you ever hurry up now or for me old supper I'll be late and purposely his old cap he threw inside the gate. Go fetch thy cap, said Peter, you sacrilegious lout. And Paddy, Surely he nipped inside the gate and he locked St. Peter out. Stay out there. <laughs> but through the keyhole, loud he cried. He says, I'm master now, you see. But I'll give up heaven, the gate and crown. If you set the six counties free, you'll never beat the Irish. Good idea.